morning, everybody. Um, I'm going to share with you a couple of verses from Jesus Himself, and uh, I'm going to going to try to give this word as I feel like the Lord would like me to. Um, been a lot of little events in my life here in the last couple of days, and uh, it just kind of triggered my studying and thinking and pondering on these verses that Jesus said. So I'm going to share them. If they bless you, then praise the Lord Jesus, um, because he's the one that's been teaching me, so <laughs> he deserves all the glory. Um, I want to remind you, though, that the place where he shared this was on Hillside probably one of the considered one of the, the the deepest literal talkings of the Lord Jesus that we have recorded in scripture uh, because he covers quite a bit in this in just this chapter and, and I know chapters are man-made but, but still th this event is pretty pretty powerful huge blessing to me it's completely changed my way of thinking <laughs> At times I still struggle with it, but um, I'm going to try to share this as best of the, the ability that I have. Um, but just remember that, that he was teaching this on the hillside. There's one thing you have to understand of Jesus. Yes, he went to the temple. Yes, he was here to obey the law of God. But Jesus took every opportunity to tell people about the kingdom coming, about repentance, about the way we should be acting towards each other. This is who Jesus was. He loved everybody. He tried his best to help. Yes, he 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 didn't come to condemn the world. It says he came that the world was condemned already. That's what you got to understand. When you hear somebody telling you the truth that's in the scripture, when we're the ones as Christians sharing the scripture, you need to remember we're sharing God's word. Sometimes he gives us that fire and we get excited about it. Sometimes he doesn't. Sometimes we don't like what the preacher has to say. Sometimes we don't like what just a regular brother has to say. Sometimes we don't like what people tell us. But we're not accusing anybody. We're just telling you what the word says. Okay? That, that's just what it is. How does a man do this? Only the Spirit of God can really encourage a person to share the word of God in the right way. Sure, anybody can pick up the Bible and spit verses at people. Even the unsaved can do that. But to share the word of God in love and truth and with freedom only comes from the Holy Spirit. So let's read through a couple of these verses. And then we're going to talk about them. Okay, uh, Matthew chapter 5. Uh, I want to, want to kind of cover something again too. Here's, here's a verse that's really, really important in verse 1. It says in Matthew chapter 5. It says, In seeing the multitudes, he went up into the mountain, into a mountain. And he went, and he was set. It means he sat down. We all the time see people standing up, sharing the word of God. It's interesting how Jesus was okay sitting down and teaching. Um, his disciples came to him. He sat down. Everybody got closer wanting to hear what he had to say. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, okay? For they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. We're going to stop right there, okay? That's... that's that's honestly, that's, that's a lot to cover in just an everyday, okay? That's, that's a lot to go through just in those few verses. Here's what we're going to talk about for just a few minutes. This is what the Lord's given to me, okay? That word right there is really... I guess the first thing I could do is try to tell you who I was I was I was raised up in a missionary preachers pastors home started churches 
I was taught how to be Christ-like according to the scripture, according to the word of God. I really got upset as I was going older. Um, really got upset because I went to I went to Bible school. Went to study about the Word of God. You know, felt it up upon me that maybe I need to go do this. And uh, I failed miserably. And you hear me talk about that sometimes, okay? But it's important to know that part because I. I tried to learn, people tried to teach me. And to be honest with you, I wasn't in the right state of mind, I don't believe. Um, my goal was not to push and push and push and try to get to this one specific place. To me, it should just be there because I had had so much teaching, because I had had so much experience around the Word of God. I mean, I felt like it should be easy. Well, guess what? You would think, well, you know, you have to dedicate blah, blah, Well, the truth is, what I was trying to be taught, a lot of it had nothing to do with the Bible. You say, well, at a Bible college. Yeah, I mean, I'll just be honest with you. A lot of it in Bible college was about this book that this one wrote and write a paper about it. This book that this one wrote and write a paper about it. This book that this one wrote and write a paper about it. I just didn't, I could do that, but I didn't feel no leading to do that. I didn't, I just got to, I, I started wondering myself. I thought, well, looks to me like Preaching and sharing the word of God is kind of simple. I mean, anybody can do it because all you're doing is just repeating what everybody else is saying. That's that's the honest truth. I mean, that's kind of what I saw. And I started seeing as I was there, I started seeing a lot of bickering, started seeing a lot of differences of opinion, started seeing people's attitudes, even leaders that were prideful, started seeing a lot of other things around me that I'm like, man, this. I mean, this, is this how it's supposed to be? I mean, if we're at this level, is this how it's supposed to be? Well, I got the opportunity to leave that place because, I mean, they pretty much came to me in my last year after they had already told me, hey, if you do these classes, because I'd failed. I was struggling with my GPA. I was struggling with everything. They, got, they pretty much came to me and said, hey, look, you know, you're going to have to come back for one more season and I'm like why we're almost done with these classes I pretty much spent the last two years trying to get one year degree to go on to the next maybe to see what else I'm supposed to do because I'm struggling here I'm having a hard time and I admitted that a lot of it was my fault well there's these two classes that we can't we can't you know you didn't take what you were supposed to take <laughs> and I stood there and I was like I can't afford to come back for one more season family is helping me. I'm trying to do this, do that. I'm like, I spent three years here and I can't even get a one-year degree. Well, you didn't do this too late. I said, I came in here and I talked to you all and I asked you all specifically what classes do I need and I've pushed all year long trying to get, and now you're telling me three weeks before I'm supposed to have my one-year degree that I'm not going to get my one-year degree. I'm like, this is ridiculous. Why didn't you tell me, well, uh, you know, it's your responsibility. I'm sitting there thinking, really? I mean, this is my person that's supposed to be helping me academically. I'm like, this is crazy. I'm like, you all pretty much lied to me, and you're not even going to accept the fact that it's your responsibility that you messed up. So I had the opportunity to go work and go do a, an actual construction job, and I left. I was done. Pretty much left that schooling. So that's it. And I thought, man, this is crazy. Well, the people that I went out with and I started working with in construction probably wasn't the best influence in my life. Uh, 
wasn't their fault, it's my fault. I, I take full responsibility, but got involved with a lot of things I shouldn't have been involved with. Drew me away from what I should have been doing. But in my mind already, this is what the Christian people look what they're doing to me. <laughs> and I accepted that, hey, some of that, a lot of that was my fault because I should have known better. I should have pushed. A lot of other kids went and studied and they did great. I didn't. Uh, I wanted to, but I didn't. Maybe I went one too hard. Enough. And when I was out there in the world, it started just little by little. I mean, I just got away from everything. I realized that the world was the same way. That the world was very judgmental. That the world was a hard place to be in. It's, it's, it's lonely at times. Because everybody pretty much, you're either doing something for them or they have no need for you. Started to see a comparison between the two. Didn't realize it really till later on in the years, but I, I did. I mean, I tried everything I could. I did things. I tried to be part of the groups. I tried to be, always felt like an outsider. We would go do things we weren't supposed to do, and always in the back of my mind, it's like, you know, you shouldn't be doing this. It's like, yeah, but I mean, what other alternative do I have? I mean, nobody wants me. Nobody wants me in their little group. But, um, I get up and speak something, share something, nobody agrees with me. So it's kind of always been that way. I'm blessed to have my family. Um, little by little, the Lord blessed me there. I had my kids. Life started changing started realizing because the Lord showed me one day I'll never forget it my two girls came home from church they'd been going to their mom and took them to church Wednesday night and uh, mind you I over the years I mean I've shared I couldn't tell you how many messages I've got to share I can't tell you how many times I got up to give test anything but here I was you know later on in life, probably in my late 20s, actually probably 30s, probably early 30s, and uh, there I was sitting a big beer in my head, and I'm uh, not proud of it, but that's, that's who I'd become. Those two girls came in there, and they were like, Dad, Mom says, you know, you know quite a bit about the Bible, they have a story. For some reason, I think the story had to do about David, but I don't remember what it was about been a while since I'm lucky to remember yesterday but anyway uh, sit there and those girls I started explaining what that story really was to the girls my girls and uh, all of a sudden I know who it was now it was the spirit of the Lord I, I knew then but I kind of questioned it later these two kids need you seemed like a lot of people around me had 
and I started getting to where I didn't like that attitude in my life because I had become that judgmental person. I had become that person that, you know, was always accusative. I had become that person that I didn't like others being to me. And I started really reading and studying, and the more I studied and the more I read, the more I understood that, man, that, that's his flesh and Satan that, that does that. And yes, Christians could be used, I could be used. Yes, there's times that we needed to be corrected because we're not doing the right thing. But there's also times that we need to sit there and as we see people doing things the wrong way, we need to allow the Holy Spirit to correct them because no man's really going to change another man's heart. It takes that drawing of the Holy Spirit to help. One of the first things that the Lord taught me when I was sitting in church was I couldn't concentrate, was to close my eyes while the singing was going on, while the testimonies were going on, just to close my eyes and just to listen. And to, if I heard somebody say something that Maybe I didn't feel like, from according to what I've studied, was wrong to pray for. If I heard somebody hurting in their prayer or in their witness, to pray for them. And what happened to me that I didn't expect was at times I started to, and this is where a lot of people probably have an issue with me, but just the way it is, I started to feel pain when people were putting up and talking about the things they're suffering in life. I started feeling the joy of when people were singing and praising God. I started to literally feel just like a lightning all over my body. But I also could feel just a heavy heart when people were talking about things they're going through. And there was a few times that people would get up and give testimonies about children or give up, that the Lord would just overwhelm me, we need to go pray for them now. And I would get up and go over and pray for them. And then it, it changed me because it took me from somebody who was hateful, it took me from somebody who was always accusative, it took me from somebody like, you should know better, took me from that type of person to not always because we're all human we all have this flesh we're fighting against but so many times people see somebody that is struggling with maybe it's drugs or alcohol maybe it's uh, lust of flesh maybe it's running around with women maybe whatever it may be you know a lot of times the sins that's the only ones we talk about but Lying, stealing, cheating, talking about your brothers. I mean, all these other things become sins too, you know. Anytime you give a partial truth, that's technically a sin also. So anytime that I've, I, I, I've seen though, and sometimes people didn't even have to tell me. I could just see it on their face. I could feel it in my spirit that they, they were heavy hearted and something was bothering them. And then there was times to where different positions in my life there were different jobs that I've had that it was my turn where I had to, I mean, we can only give compassion so many times to where there has to be an action taken, you know, to where you have to give a corrective action. And it would always come to me, it's like, Lord, I have to do this because I'm trying to help, but, but help me through it, please, because want to say things the right way. I don't want to just be that type of leader. I don't want to be, I want to be like you were. And these verses right here is something that has helped keep me in check. There's another verse in the Bible that talks about that servants obey your masters. But it also talks about that masters you need to forbear threatening. We need to be really careful with what we do. Why? Because Jesus pretty much talked about, the Word of God talks about, that whatever measure we judge by, we're going to be judged by. Sure, we may go through this life and everything seems like we all worked out okay, and boy, he was successful. But when you get to heaven, it may be a different thing. It may be, you may be face to face with God, and 
that conversation you have with God, well, I don't, I don't really want it to be that way. I, I don't want it to be, the, you know, I want to be ashamed from the things as it is. We really need to think about that. I'm just telling you from a personal experience how it was throughout my life that there are many times that the people over me, there was no mercy, there was no compassion, there was, and I've been blessed a lot to have mercy and compassion, I'm not saying that, I'm just saying I, I remember those days, I, I'm one of the first to tell you, yes, as Christians, we tend to be church bound. you may not like that, turn me off, I don't really care, it doesn't bother me. Because it's the truth that I've learned through Jesus. That there are times that we are the Pharisees. There's times that we expect the whole world to live according to the Word of God. We don't. We don't. You know, there are times that we expect everybody to come listen to us share stuff. But the truth is, when somebody asks us, hey, I feel like the Lord shared this on me. We don't want to go listen to them. Because we only think two or three have it. That's not really what Jesus was talking about. Jesus was talking about us being merciful. To get merciful. I understand there's times, look, that, that God gives us his word. And that we are supposed to share the truth. But the truth that we share, be very, very careful when you share it because I'm going to tell you that whatever you speak it's for you first and, and you can say oh well we all should be able to get up and shout and share it but I'll be honest with you it's the spirit of God that sometimes encouraged me to do that because the more you study the more you realize that well you let down God a lot you know uh Sure, I mean, I may not get alcohol. And sure, I may not go out here and abuse myself with drugs. Sure, I may not go out here and murder people. But does that mean that I'm not a sinner? Well, then, then I guess we really haven't read a lot of the letters in the New Testament because one of them, he says that he's the chief of sinners. He says that he admits that there's no good thing in this flesh. It says that every time he tries to do good, he runs off and does the opposite. And I'm not saying that they think that, that they're walking around in sin. That's not what I'm saying. But all of us fall short. Uh, as Christians, we all fall short. And we need each other to remind each other of the truth that is in God's Word. I've seen the side of somebody just, I can't believe you did that. And then I've also seen the side of somebody that says, I love you even though you did that. Yes, it was wrong. Yes, you shouldn't have done it. But come here and let's, let's clean you up. And let's get through this. You know, that's kind of what Jesus did to Peter. You know, he, he denied him. You realize in the scripture, Jesus said that anybody that denied him in front of the Father or in front of man, he would deny in front of the Father. His own disciple, Peter, denied him three times. And did he kick him to the side? No. He came to him and told him, do you love me? He says, yeah, I love you. Well, then he, go do what I've asked you to do. I'll share my word. It's interesting to me Jesus really is. And it's also interesting to me how hard it is for us as people to be Christ-like. It's not just a snap of the finger and all of a sudden we're doing a good job. I had an incident the other day where, and this is part of what triggered a lot of that, I've seen it quite a bit here lately. It was somebody who was obvious was on a lot of medication or taking their own, maybe illegally, I don't know comment came out, I can't believe a person like that wouldn't, I can't leave, believe a person like that would do such a thing. I made the comment, I was like, well, we all need Jesus, and that person obviously needs Jesus quite a bit. I can't believe people reject Jesus, and I can't believe people, you know, they just need to, do, and I was like, you 
know, the truth is, is by grace we see. And even having the gift of grace, look how many times we walk right into the messes we walk into. To be Christ-like is a very hard thing to do. But when you actually do it, you'll receive a peace you can't understand. The whole, all the years that I was judgmental, that I was pretty much giving back to everybody what they gave me, I was one of the most miserable men you've ever known. And didn't realize it. But later on throughout the years, I'm going to tell you right now, the three people in my life, three people in my life that have told me more, that have taught me more in Christ through His Word. What I really was like in that time. And that's my wife and my two daughters. They have really been used by God like you wouldn't believe. That's why when people tell me, I don't think women should be preaching. But to me, I think you ought to hush. <laughs> I think you ought to hush because there's three women in my life that God has used more preaching to me than any other man out here. Because they tell me the truth. They love me. They really care about me. They depend on me a lot of times, but they still tell me the truth. And they call it out like it is. My little girls talked about at times that they were they were afraid of me because I was mean and hateful. My wife prayed for me and would tell me, I, I prayed for you, you don't know how many times. Because I knew that you knew scripture. I knew that you knew things about the Bible, yet here you were one of the most miserable people in the world. Well, the Lord has started to take away that misery from my life when I stopped being judgmental towards other people. Pretty amazing. He started taking that misery away when I quit feeding that demon that was in me, that was pestering me, that was all over me, that was encouraging me to do wrong things. And the Holy Spirit started to show me that, hey, if you read my word, if you study my word, if you show love to others, if you do these things the word says, it's very interesting because one of the verses in the Bible that God really poured into me, it's, I can't tell you the exact verse right now because I'm driving, but it's, it's in Isaiah between 45, the chapter 45 and chapter 50. And it simply says, it's amazing because it's one of my favorite songs to sing. When you obey my law, your peace will run like a river. Love that song. Peace like a river. It's well with my soul. I'm going to tell you something. I've had days that I've done some of the stupidest things in my life. Yes, I've still, Sunday morning, felt like I was supposed to get up and sing a song. Or I, Monday morning, or Tuesday morning, or Wednesday morning. Whatever day it's come to me that I've gotten breath and woke up, and I have felt miserable, and the Holy Spirit has reminded me, let's sing this. And I have sang that song, which all words are, is words connected to music. It's all song is. You're proclaiming it whether you realize it or not. And that's a whole nother discussion, but because of what Jesus did on the cross for me, that's what gives me that peace like a river. Basically what this is, friend, is look, fight with the Holy Spirit. That's, that's what I'm going to tell you to use as a weapon. Fight with the Holy Spirit. Fight with the power of the Word of God through His Spirit. That feeling of being an accuser, of being that person who looks down on others and instead welcome in the spirit of mercy, instead welcome in the spirit of compassion, instead welcome in the spirit of forgiveness, instead welcome in the spirit of truth that can only be found through Jesus Christ your Savior. 
and you watch that peace flow through your life. You're still gonna go through hard times. You're still gonna have struggles. You're still gonna fight yourself a lot, but I'm telling you, the amount of peace you receive is amazing, okay? You're gonna get to a point, because this is what I've, I've, I've tried to, this is what God, from the very beginning, one of the verses he showed me, is to learn to be content whatever state I'm in. Do you realize whatever state I'm in means I'm healthy, I'm sick. I'm walking in the spirit, his flesh is beating me up. I'm off work on the lake enjoying the day. I'm at work surrounded by more stressful situations that you can imagine. How do I become content wherever state I'm in? I'm sitting on the, the, the front pews at church. I get up, sing a song, I feel the spirit of God. Or I'm at home by myself because the church doors are closed that day. How do I get that? How do I stay in that connection? Spirit of God's how I do it. His word's how I do it. You have to let that accusative spirit go away. You have to, whatever people do or say that tries to aggravate you, just forgive them, let it go. If you see somebody that's struggling and you think they need Jesus, try to help them best you can. If they don't listen, then it's their choice. Maybe it's not the Holy Spirit's time to work in their life. Just do your part to try to help them. Do your part to try to remind them, hey, Point them to Jesus. Sometimes that's been silent. Sometimes that's just listening. But either way, this is what Jesus showed me today. This is what she's shouting. This is just the truth. This is coming from a person that I've given you a little piece of testimony in my life that I'm a Christian following Jesus that struggles. I'm a Christian following Jesus that I should apologize to some of you because I'm not always saying the right things. I'm not always Christ-like. But I can tell you that there is nobody like Jesus. Even when we were his enemy, Christ came and died for us. I don't think we understand that concept. He wants us to repent and turn from sin. He wants us to get away from it. But he knows we're made of clay and he knows we struggle. He wants to help us out of whatever mess we're in. He doesn't want us to stay in sin. But he also knows that he's the one that can pull us out of it. He has the power and the authority, and whether or not we realize it or not, we have that authority through him. That's what I'm learning even more. We have that authority. What does the devil want to do? He doesn't want us to realize that we have that authority. He doesn't want us to realize that we can call on Jesus and get this spiritual stuff out of our life. A lot of times the spiritual stuff in our life is what's affecting the physical part of our life. This flesh is always going to have issues. The older I get, the more I realize the more issues we're going to have. It's just how it is. Some go through all the life, never get sick. Others get sick every few minutes. Guess what? You both can have Jesus. You both can have that spiritual joy. You both can go through a wonderful life to share and teaching. Is all of it going to be roses and flu fruity pebbles and all this? No. It's not going to always be that way. But the joy of the Lord can be yours. You just claim it. No matter what situation I'm in, learning to be content. Learning that if the Lord wants to take this, he can take it. But while I'm here, who can I witness to? Or what do you want to teach me, Lord? Who can witness to me? The witness is one who listens and then just tells back what he saw. Anyway, this is what the Lord blessed me with. Hope he blesses you. Any of this blessed you? Take the time to thank Jesus, because without Jesus, I'd be nothing. His blood is the only thing that washed away my sins, and I'm so thankful for it. He's at the right hand of the Father, has all authority. People better be ready. He's going to be back. If you're a Christian, you better be ready, because we're all going to have a lot to answer for when he returns. Love you all. Jesus loves you. You have a wonderful day.